Hi, everyone. Welcome to the community engagement training. In these sessions, I would like to introduce you to the inclusive engagement for public health emergency. My name is Dr. Suvaji Good, Regional Advisor for Health Promotion and Social Determinants of Health. In this world of diversity, inclusive of everyone becomes a challenge. And I would like to introduce you to the framework of social determinants of health, applying gender, human rights, and these social determinants of health in community engagement. It is so important for us today to be reminded that everything we do, everything we experience in our daily life are influenced by many factors. The social determinants of health basically is a non-medical factors that influencing health impact and health outcomes, and especially the impact on equity. There are the factors in which people born, work, live, and age, and everything we do in our daily life our socioeconomic status, our gender, our ethnicities are influenced by the structure of the society that we lived in. What's important to us is also there are interfaces between people and community. There are important part of the social cohesions and capitals that we must value and understand how they influence the way we perceive the world, the behavior, whether it's biological or psychosocial factors that impact on our health and well being. I would like to walk you through in the normal situation when we do the community engagement we must realize that community is no longer a monolithic and aspect of life. Community is dynamic, just like the world. It's just a smaller version. Imagine yourself walking into a room full of people with different reactions of your appearance. They look at you, they want to believe in you, or they're suspicious of you. It's very much depends on the pre-existing belief systems, social values, and the norms. Or if you walk into an unfamiliar community with people who speak, dress, and express differently from what you used to, how you build a trust, how you're going to communicate with them, and make sure that their presence are welcome and you value them the way that they could also value you. Or if you walk into a community with groups of youngsters and young people often suspicious of who you are, especially if you are age, if you're different, you dress different, how could they trust you? Some of them may be distrusting from the way you look, the way you present yourself, the way you compose yourself from the very day one or minute that they see you. How you could engage with these different sets of community. What we have in common in all types of community is everyone want to be heard. People are different and they experience things differently. We want to make sure that what they experience are recognized. Of course, there will be imbalance of power. If you're a woman, you're young children, or you're disabled, you may not be heard. You may not be seen before. 
or a young girl that carry a baby may not have been given a chance to be listened to, to be contributing to important policies that affect her life. These imbalance of power are very real and drive people out of the mainstreams and thus being excluded in every interventions or in every actions that happened around them and impacting their life. Why inclusive community engagement is important today? Inclu inclusive community engagement can lead to active participation and buy-in from community. It can enhance interventions and understand the need of people who needed the more attention. It can unlock challenges in control of transmissions in public health emergency. There are many unknowns territories that we face in today public health emergency. Marginalized community may have important local knowledge that can improve interventions. We have experience in West Africa, in Middle East countries, and in many conflict zones. The local communities can have a better understanding of their own situations and know when and how to stop the transmissions, to stop the barriers, to help them protect themselves. Inclusive community engagement can help us decide appropriate public health measures for greater impact. You may be interested now, what is this, this inclusive community engagement? I would like to call it ICE, I-C-E. After review many literatures, I realized that there's no comprehensive definitions on the inclusive community engagement yet. I'd attempt to define them together in a comprehensive way that IEC can be an engagement process that include all participants by creating safe envi environment that people can share their experiences, concerns, and feel they belong to the community. In finding com common solution, it articulates the principles of equality, equity, and diversity why strengthens relationship and improve life of the whole community. How to practice desires? It's like if you start the first process correct, it's like putting the button, the first button of your church. The right one is correct, everything should be correct. But of course, human is dynamic. I would like to share with you at least some of these basic principles to start with. To have the inclusive engagement, the first step is very crucial, that we have to have intentional welcome for everyone that you engage with, especially in conducting community dialogue, that no one is left behind and no one should feel that they are here by accident. They are here because you intended to hear their voices. You intended to learn from their experience and you must practice active listening to be truly engaged, not just telling people, not just having more people of different types and listen to your story, but more important to listen to their story. And by doing so, you have to keep your activities and engagement process that celebrate the diversity. What does it mean? I'm going to elaborate later in all the steps. Celebrating diversity in brief is 
make sure that everyone involved being valued for who they are, feeling equal, and you must be honest and recognize the differences and choices that they can make. And important principle is everyone matter. Everyone deserves to be respect. Of course, and we must understanding the underlining issues around stereotype, prejudice, even downright discrimination because of hidden imbalance of power and some obvious imbalance of power. The children or young people may not have courage to speak in front of elderly or young women will not go speak up against the older men in the community. So how are we going to make sure that everybody have a chance to speak and feel the respect? Let me come to this first. Let's check this thing first. For those who has been in community engagement practices before, and those who has been doing this for many years, every time we walk into a community or we live in that community, we have to ask ourselves, do we really know the community? Do you understand the history of that community, the component of the people in that community? It might take time to understand first and get as much as information before you have start working into that inclusive process. We have to check out, have we reached out to community leaders, both formal and informal ones, not go by position, but natural leaders as well. Have you tried to reach community members where they are, at their home, at their fields, at their most comfortable setting? And have you made it easy for everyone to participate in your community dialogue? And have you provide multiple cha channels for people who may not be comfortable in speaking, writing, but able to share their views and participate, especially feel safe to give feedback. These important checklists will help you to walk through the process and understand that sometimes process are more important than the steps. And the steps are not set on stones. Steps can be back and forth and it can be reiterated any point in time of the community engagement process. I would like to introduce to you some useful process. Like I said, the first welcoming sessions is very important. You have to establish a sense of belonging for everyone and make connections, no matter how differences they are. We should be able to make connection to each one of them through activities. Many of you have done a lot of facilities, uh, engagement, ice breakings, all of that, bring them on and make sure that everyone feel connected. Everyone feel that yes, I am a human just like anyone else. We all have basic needs. We all have feelings, emotions, experiences. And that you can generate the empathetic process. And that means emotionally and intellectually equal space and focus on persons, not focus on community itself. Because if your community means the people inside the community. You have to understand to be flexible in your process. You may not be able to convey your message right away, but it is important to make sure that their intellect is recognized, their emotions is recognized before you engage with anyone and have the empathy about their sense of well-being in that community. 
The third process that we often neglect is the listening process. Listen to people. What important is we like to listen to the elderly and the leaders and those who ever speak up first. As an inclusive community engagement, you might have to turn the table around and start from the people who experience discriminations or having challenges in access information, services or connected to other. We should use gender lens analysis, encourage more people from women sectors to speak up, speak from what they know, and let people realize that all of us have something to say, aware that we ourselves, everyone, influenced by our culture, norms, and personal history, the way we dress, the way we speak, and make judgment on others. By listening to other people, we have to train each other to not judge and interpret their words. We have to start clearing the stereotype, biases, and prejudice that may occur, especially from the facilitator. Sometimes we do it automatically because we thought that's a normal, but it could making some, some people in the groups drifting away from your sessions. We have to understand that how the attitude translates into behavior and how those behavior impact others people feeling. It's important to bring games or activities or music to create positive interactions and active listening from one another. And everyone, keep reminded to everyone, they have the right to be heard. Their strength needs recognition. Their expertise needs appreciation. And their experience must be valued. From my experience, what I like to do is let people speak and write them down on the blackboard or on the sheets that you place on the wall and let everybody see it, see? Whatever you say, it, it get listed down and you all can contribute to it. And you can start looking into your words and see how does it mean to anyone and how can we use your knowledge to improve that process. It is important for us to bring example, a positive attitude, the can-do attitude and demonstrate the positive disposition from ourselves and avoid imposing ideas and information to people outright. Support their ideas and contribute from their idea to what you want them to change. But be honest and open to this intention with actively understand each other and not just tolerate the differences. We can have different ideas, we can look different, we can come from different backgrounds, but we are here with the common goals, especially if we're talking about a public health emergency, we have a common problem to solve. We should honor that boundary. Some people may not want to continue listening. We can schedule another time, but don't withhold or distance yourself from them. Keep engaging. By respecting them doesn't mean you ignore them and leave them alone. You have to continue engage. And maybe it's important to change the atmosphere to maximize the joy and connections and minimize the fear. It is important to note that people learn and do their best when they're happy. If the environment that you're setting for your community dialogue is too hot, is too cold, is distractive, and people don't feel happy, you might have to change that environment. Bring new 
interventions, into the dialogues. People can talk to one another without feeling hostility. We can frame the challenges through the lens of possibility. The facilitator for the inclusive community engagement have to have many uh, uh, things in their pockets to pull out. So what are the possibility? How can we reframe the challenge and make it what if? Keep asking, keep continue that uh, engagement and elevate the power of sharing of experiences. Not only your experience, but the experience of everyone who sit in your community engagement dialogue. Of course, you must have the limited numbers of people in your team in your dialogue at a time and a, num as, and, and a duration that you want to stay. But, in, but keep elevating that power of sharing of experience, storytelling that can create a greater potential for positive change. And at the same time, as I put in the bottom bar before, we recognize those as a blind spot. The blind spot are the things that we ingrained embedded in the power structure that preclude people from access what they needed at the first place and encourage individuals to thrive, to be accepted and forget about trying to fit in. They can stay being a different, but try to be accepted. Try to make them understand how important they are in controlling of that transmissions. Everyone wants to feel important, no matter what. I like one of the summaries that uh, South Australia, I think it's University and Academy Institutes have put together for the social inclusiveness, that the inclusiveness work well when I feel included, when I have a say, when I am informed, when I am connected, and I am involved. At the same time, it's also important that I see what you or my community feel about me. I feel included when you try to understand, when you show the respect and you embrace all abilities that I have, no matter how small or big, and you create that opportunities for me to contribute to the world. So I think it's very sweet and nice to, to stay in touch and engage with people and create that good feeling that people will sustain and bide in. So I would say that inclusive community engagement or the eyes is a journey to create equal partnership and transitions to a barrier-free culture. It may take time, but it brings sustainable change for individuals and community, and it could be truly empowered. So ice break barriers for healthier society. That's what I want to conclude, and I want to thank all of you to join in the sessions for those who want to